Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos describing how to use technological tools in the classroom. In this video, I will provide you with a brief overview of how to use Microsoft Excel for this class. Many people are familiar with Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint and find them pretty easy to use. Excel, on the other hand, can be difficult to use properly. Many students find it very frustrating. This video will give you a number of tips to alleviate that difficulty. This graphic shows the layout of Microsoft Excel, as well as an example of the graphic I will describe how to produce. Excel, as I mentioned earlier, can be a little bit frustrating to use. If you don't do things exactly like you're supposed to, you won't have any luck at all producing a graph or getting the conclusions that you want. With that said, why bother using Excel at all? Why not just calculate things or produce graphics by hand? First, it's a lot easier to share materials to collaborate electronically than to produce anything physically. Second, it is very easy to edit huge amounts of information or make complex calculations in Excel as compared to doing so by hand. Third, the materials produced with a computer usually look a lot more professional and better than those produced by hand. Fourth, computers won't screw up calculations as humans can, and in my experience, Excel actually makes the chances of screwing up a lot smaller. Fifth, when you know what you're doing, uh, using a computer is a lot faster than anything you could do by hand. There are a lot of different spreadsheet programs out there that you could use to graph other than Excel, and many of those are free, so why would you choose Excel? First, it's very popular. Most computers that you'll encounter will have Microsoft Excel on them as opposed to other programs, including those that are found at our school. Second, it's used a lot in the professional world. Third, more people are familiar with Excel than other programs, making it easier to troubleshoot problems. Fourth, it's about as straightforward as a spreadsheet program can be while still providing all the tools that you might need for different analytical purposes. We'll go ahead and describe how you can use Excel step by step. The first thing we'll have to do is talk about how you can input data. Before you can produce elaborate graphs using Excel, you need to input your data. Even inputting your data into Excel properly can prove to be a bit challenging. Each square in Excel is referred to as a cell. Each cell is named using two components, the vertical column, when with it's labeled with letters, and the horizontal row that's designated by numbers. The label for this example, the amount of penicillin in milliliters, is in cell B2 because it's located under the column labeled B and it's to the right of the row designated 2. It doesn't make a bit of difference which cell you start inputting your information in. B2 is just fine. One thing that throws a lot of people off when they start to type something, whether it's a title or a label, is that it's a bit longer than the length of the cell. Uh, the text covers into the next column. The red boxes show how far this label is moved past the end of the column B. This can be remedied pretty easily. All you need to do is double click the line between the column that you started writing in, B in this case, and the next column, or C. The exact location is shown in the picture here. Not only is this important for aesthetic reasons, it's also important for Excel to make your calculations. If you were to skip column C and put more data in column D because you didn't want the text to overwrite what you already have, for example, uh, you would have complications later. So don't skip this last step. Once you've double clicked in between column B and column C, it should expand just as wide as it needs to be so that all of the text will be contained within that particular cell, as the graphic now illustrates. Almost every time that you use Excel, you'll need two or more columns worth of data. At this point, it would be safe to add data to column C, as I did in this picture. Again, it's very important that the two columns that you put data in are right next to each other. Otherwise, calculations will not be properly made. It is also important that similar data be placed in vertical columns and not horizontal rows. This example exhibits this. All of the amounts of penicillin measured in milliliters are organized vertically, as are the number of bacterial colonies. From time to time, you may want to move your data around to different cells in Excel. To organize all of the data, I might want to move all the numbers into the top left portion of the page, for example. To do this, you'll first need to highlight all of the cells that you wish to move. To highlight all these cells, you will need to begin by clicking one corner of the data. Once you've clicked, you need to continue holding down the mouse. In this example, I would begin by clicking on cell B2 and holding down on the mouse or the trackpad. 
While holding the click down, you would then drag your mouse to the opposite, or in this case, the bottom right corner, as shown in the picture here. You should now find a blue box around all of the cells that you wish to move. At this point, you just need to click on that blue line surrounding all the data cells, and while still holding down the mouse or the trackpad, drag it in the direction that you want those cells to move. In this case, to the top left of the screen. When you let go of the trackpad or the mouse, everything should have moved as you hope it would. Once you have input all your data, you can do a number of different things with that data. Our primary use in class, and the focus of the rest of this video, will involve producing a graphic from your data. To graph your data after it already has been inputted properly, you need to start by highlighting all the information of interest as shown in this picture. Every edition and version of Excel looks a little bit different, so the next steps might provide slightly more difficulty. On my version of Excel, the next step is clicking on the tab entitled Charts. In other versions of Excel, you might need to click on a tab entitled Insert to create a graphic. Make sure you choose the appropriate type of graphic once you get to this point, as another video that I created describes. The video that I'm referring to is called Graph Types and Guidelines. Once you've clicked on the appropriate tab, there are a ton of different graphing types that you can choose to produce. In this circumstance, a scatterplot graph seems most appropriate since the independent and dependent variables are both numbers, so that is what I have chosen. Finally, you have produced a graphic, but you're not finished yet. There's still a number of steps that should be taken to ensure that the graph depicts all the data that it needs to properly. I would begin editing the graphic by removing the unnecessary key that's on the right side of this graph, highlighted in red. Click on this section of the graph, and click on the line represented in red, and click the delete key to remove it. It just takes up space unnecessarily. The resulting graphic should fill a much more considerable portion of the available space, as shown here. The current graphic, while it shows the data pretty well, would be very confusing to someone who didn't produce it. The graphic needs labels and a more descriptive title. To add labels and edit your title, you need to first click on the Chart Layout tab, highlighted in red. Note, you should not click on the Layout tab, but the Chart Layout tab. If you don't see a Chart Layout tab, make sure that you have clicked on the graph itself and it should become available. To add axis titles, click on the button entitled Axis Titles, highlighted in red. Make sure you do so for the horizontal, or x-axis, and the vertical, or y-axis. It really doesn't matter which of the axis title options that you choose. Now that you have, on your graphic, spaces for axis titles and a graphic title, you can click on the text and change those titles. There you have it, a graph that contains all of the necessary elements. At this point, you could resize the different segments of the graphic and customize colors, as well as other elements to your liking. That is the end of this video on how to use Excel for educational purposes. If you're interested in watching any other videos on how to use technology in the classroom or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.